Hey kids, Mr. Fly here. Hope you're well. Out and about today on a pretty dismal day on the Honda CB500X, my latest long-term loan bike from those nice folk at Honda UK. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what the bike is like to live with, having now ridden this bike for some weeks. So if you're interested in the Honda CB500X, I'll nip back to TMF Towers and let's talk a bit more about the bike. See you after the credits. Okay, so I've been lucky enough to be riding the CB500X for the last couple of weeks, and I've ridden it on all sorts of roads and in all sorts of conditions. And in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is not only showing you what it's like to ride at night, what it's like on the motorway, uh, all that kind of thing, but I'm also gonna give you the lessons that I've learned on the bike, uh, the things that you wouldn't necessarily pick up if you just took it out for a one hour test ride. Not just the good things, but the bad things too. Uh, I'm also gonna take you through some practical aspects of ownership, things like, you know, what's the horn like, what's under the seat, uh, how do you check the oil, that kind of thing. Uh, and then at the end, I'll give you a bit of a sum up. So if you're interested in the CB500X, this video is for you. So I've got one bar left on the uh, fuel gauge. Really pleased to see that on the CB500X they have given you a proper fuel gauge. So time to get some motion lotion. I'm going to pop into my local Morrisons here, get some fuel, see if there are any surprises. I'm not expecting any, but you never know, do you, when you fuel up a bike for the first time. Sometimes you can get caught out. Also be keen to see if that fuel gauge immediately registers that we've filled up. Just one of those little things that uh, interests me. Righty, where can we go? This is what I like about fueling up a bike rather than the car. You can just nip into any old pump. Great. This will do me. Dead easy to find neutral on this bike, I'm glad to say. And there we go, none of that keyless nonsense here. So the fuel cap looks pretty standard. Dead easy to open, no surprises there. Right, we'll fill her up and see how long it takes for that uh, fuel gauge to register. Incredibly frugal this bike. As I was uh, riding down here, I saw on the, uh, on the dash 112 miles per gallon. <laughs> now that was when I was sort of cruising along in sixth. So I don't expect to get that all the time, but I think uh, 85 miles per gallon is probably realistic. Right, there we go. How much was that? £13.42 to fill her up. That's what I like. Nice. Right, on we go. And immediately, look, the fuel gauge is uh, right up to the top. So another that, uh, thing that some tramps, for some reason, do where they take absolutely ages to read that you filled it up. So anyway, no surprises there at the fuel station. Just a good one in that it was cheap to fill up. Okay, so here I am on the M40, a motor of course, doing a steady 72 indicated miles now, so probably about 69 in reality. And the bike's absolutely fine, it's doing, uh, what, 5,500 RPM. It doesn't sound particularly strained, and if I wind up, yeah, there's a bit more to go, and she'll go quite a bit faster than that, so let's just come back to 70 again. Mirrors, no vibration there, can see out the back okay. A few people have said to me via social media it does it vibrate at high speeds, but I have to say I don't feel any uh, anything intrusive at all. There are a little bit of vibrations through the hand pegs, but nothing at all uh, that you would you know would get in the way. It's not, not a bike that if you had to go to work on motorways, the vibration would trouble you in any way at all. It's absolutely fine. Also, you've got pretty good uh, wind protection on this bike with this big screen and a fairly large frontal area. I'm feeling quite, you know, shielded here. I'm in my infamous bubble of calm. I've just got a small bit of wind touching the very top of my helmet, but it's clean air. It's not uh, dirty, turbulent air. So you could trundle along on a motorway at 71 miles an hour quite comfortably for hours and hours on this bike, absolutely fine. It doesn't have an abundance of horsepower, so it's not like blisteringly fast for rapid, rapid overtakes, but you can get out into the overtaking lanes and wind her up. Yeah, faster roads, motorway is no issue at all on the CB500X. Another thumbs up for this little bike. So what's the CB500X like in the wet then? Well, it doesn't get much wetter than today, as you can see. Absolutely hideous day to be riding a motorcycle. But it does give me a chance to see what it's like in terms of weather protection. Well, the... Uh, physical size of the bike is quite big. At the front end you've got quite a big frontal area to protect you from the worst of the weather. And this screen seems fairly effective on here. 
a little bit disappointed that there's no adjustment on here, nothing, not even manually, it doesn't look like you can adjust it with screws, but it does a good job of keeping the most of the wind blast off of your torso. I've got a little bit of wind hitting me at the top of the head, but it's not uh, dirty air, it's smooth airflow, so not a problem. So I feel quite protected from the worst of the weather from that point of view. In terms of technology, what does the bike have to help you out in wet weather? Well, it's got ABS, of course, anti-lock brakes. So if you did grab a handful of brakes, you can stop without uh, fear of the wheels locking. So that's a nice feature. No traction control on the bike, though. It is a relatively basic bike, of course. But so far, I've not had any issues riding in the rain and in the wet on this bike. I've not felt I've needed traction control. It's not like it's got a really powerful engine and you're going to suddenly lose traction when you wind her up. I've not had any moments on the bike, put it that way. The tyres that this particular bike is fitted with are Dunlop, uh, I think they're Trail Smart tyres. They're sort of, they look a little bit off-roady. They're probably 80% on-road, 20% off-road in keeping with the bike's style. But again, not had any moments with them in terms of them feeling slippery or anything like that. So yeah, no issues to report riding the CV500X in the wet. Quite well protected, keeping the worst of the weather off you. The tyres feel confidence is expiring and the ABS is a nice bit of electronic protection as well. So uh, once again, thumbs up for riding in inclement weather. Okay, to matters practical then, and the first thing on my list of uh, things to tell you about here is what is the bike like to clean? Now, I'm a bit of a, bi a clean bike fanatic. I like to keep my bikes clean. I think part of the joy of ownership is fettling your bike, and cleaning is a big part of that. Uh, so what's this bike like? Well, it does throw a lot of crud at itself, as you can see from these pictures here, in all the usual places, uh, at the back, underneath the seat, and at the front, near the downpipes, or where it seems to collect most of the dirt and grunge. It being a sort of an adventure style bike means there's quite a lot of exposed areas, scaffolding, that kind of thing. So it is quite tricky to clean, but once you give it a crack, as you can see, it comes up absolutely fine. So I think uh, I would class this as one of the more difficult bikes to clean. You've got to enjoy um, cleaning your bike. Luckily, I do. Uh, but there we go. So that's what cleaning the bike's like. Okay, another practical point that I often get asked about when I've uh, got these bikes in long term is what's it like for pumping the tyres up? What are the, uh, you know, are the valves accessible? Well, on this particular part, as you can see, it's got valves that are uh, straight across. Uh, there we go. Uh, they're not the angled ones, so you have to get in there with your pump. But uh, as there's not two discs on the uh, wheel, it's not too hard at all. So, uh, and it's the same on the back wheel, one of those uh, non-angled valves. So, yeah, absolutely fine. No problem pumping the tyres up on this. Now, one of my favourite things, as you may know, is lube. And what is lubing the chain like on this motorcycle? Well, as you can see, there's no centre stand as standard on the CB500X. You've got the side stand, of course, but no centre stand. So if you're going to lube the chain, you're going to be into the, you know, rolling the bike around your driveway so you can actually move, uh, you know, move the chain around. Uh, the chain, of course, is on this side. And on this bike, it's actually already looking a little bit rusty, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, and there's not much access to it either with this massive chain guard. So uh, I think lubing the chain on this bike is going to be a little bit of a hassle. All right, next up, what about checking the oil? Well, on this bike, uh, as you can see, you've got a sight glass here, and no smart Alex saying there's no oil in it. Of course, it's not upright, and the bike's not warm. That's why you can't see any in there. There is oil in the bike, don't worry about that. And there's a dipstick up here, so we're checking the oil bog standard. Okay, while we're down this end of the bike, something else that people often ask me about uh, when we're doing these little practical things is what does the horn sound like on a particular motorcycle? So uh, let's give that a go. It's going to be difficult for me to give you a true representation because, of course, you're only listening through the lapel mic, but it'll give you a slight idea at least of the tone of the horn. Uh, and as is often the case with Hondas, the horn and the uh, indicator are potentially around the opposite way to what you might be used to. Anyway, let's give it a go. Uh, we'll fire her up. Love watching all the uh, bits and bobs going on on the LCD. And let's see what she sounds like. Oh, it's a shrill one, but it's a bog standard motorcycle horn. It's, it's very loud, but quite shrill, as you heard. All right, what about taking a pillion on the CB500X, I hear you say. Well, unfortunately, all the pillions I have available to me won't ride on the back of a bike unless there's a top box on it. So I haven't actually taken a pillion on the back of this. But if we look at the facilities that are there available for a pillion, of course, you've got foot pegs uh, already fitted, which are there. They're quite high up above the uh, exhaust pipe, as you see. So your pillion's going to have your legs tucked up quite tight. But, and then you've got these really good grab handles, actually. So, uh, you know, even though there's not a top box on the back of the bike, uh, your pillion should feel fairly secure. Okay, another thing people often ask me on these reviews is what is under the seat? So uh, let's see if I can work out how to take it off and have a look under there. Actually, I say that, it looks like it's pretty easy to take off. There's a little lock on here, just down here. So uh, I'll get the keys in there, we'll whop it off and let's have a look under it. Ah. 
Not as straightforward as it seems. Ah, there you go. You need to give it a bit of a tug. There we go. All right, let me show you under the seat then. There we go, nice and clean. Who doesn't like the looks of a new bike under the seat? Little bit of storage room here. Uh, you could maybe get your sandwiches or chops. He could no doubt get himself a, uh, a burger under there. But uh, yeah, nice and clean. Dinky little battery as well under there, isn't it? So uh, there we go. So that's what's under the seat of a CB500X. Okay, what of uh, seating position on the bike then? Well, if you watch my first ride review, I do talk about the comfort on the bike and what the seating position is like. But often people ask me, what do I actually look like when I'm on the bike? So here's some pictures of me actually sat on the machine so you can see how bent my leg is and how easy it is to reach the ground. Just for reference, I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg. And you can see I can get my feet on the deck here. Of course, I'm in flat shoes here. Uh, if I'm wearing my heels, I can reach the ground a lot easier. <laughs> So what's the CB500X like around town then? Well, not a particularly busy day out and about in uh, miserable High Wycombe, but I have to say, this bike is brilliant around town. You feel nice and tall, so uh, when you're going through traffic, you can work out your route and you can see where you're going, that's nice. It's also a lovely light feeling bike as you rider, so easy to nip through traffic. If you were having to filter and stuff, it'd be a piece of cake on this bike. And. Uh, because you are quite sat high up as well, people can see you coming. So as a commuter and around town sort of bike, absolutely brilliant. Okay, so night time falls on the CB500X ride. And what can we say about riding the thing at night? Well, it is quite a simple bike. So in terms of the switch gear, it's not lit, but that doesn't really matter uh, because it's so simple anyway you can very quickly memorise where all the switch gear is, so nothing lit there. The only thing you can really see, as you can see, is the LCD display, which is in this negative format, so it's uh, got a black background anyway, so that doesn't even need to go into a night mode, so that's suitable for night time without it being too glary. Nice and easy to see, that works a treat. So I guess the only other thing to talk about with regards to riding at night are what are the lights like? Well, LED lights all round. The indicators are nice and bright, as you can see go down this dark lane see what she's like on dips I'll let this uh, car go ahead so we can try her on full as well in a second to right that car's disappearing okay so here we are standard dipped beam I have to say it's throwing out loads of light these new fangled LED lights are pretty good in terms of lighting up the way ahead and uh, they're just as good as any lights I've seen on any bike I have to say and then once that car's gone around the corner we'll try the full beam so the switch is just uh, big puddle switch is just on my left thumb as normal there we go there's full beam so that's dip and that's full beam does seem considerably brighter of course on full seems to throw the light quite a lot further forward as well not so much width more sort of length of what you can see and that's about it with regard to riding at night I don't think there's uh, much else to say I think it's a thumbs up the lights work really well on it Of course you can go touring on any motorcycle but uh, some are just better than others aren't they for touring and uh, where does the CB500X fit? Well I would say this would make an excellent touring bike. Number one you're in a you've got a comfortable riding position so you can ride for miles and miles and not be too fatigued too quickly. The seat is a little bit hard for my taste but uh, it's certainly not uncomfortable I've been riding the bike for the last hour or so and I could ride it for another hour easy without having to take a break. In terms of luggage you can, uh, this is the sort of bike, because of the style of bike it is, it looks great with luggage actually, and you can get uh, luggage, I think aftermarket for sure, but I think Honda even makes its own accessory luggage for this bike, so panniers and top box on here would look great, because you can carry all your stuff for your trip abroad or wherever you're going, and then when you got to your destination, this bike's great fun chucking around, so yeah, I think this would make the ideal tourer, this is sort of the concept of all-round motorcycle really, People sometimes say bikes are all-rounders and mean it in a disparaging sense, but actually you can do everything on this bike. Commute, have fun at the weekends and go on your holidays and it'll be equally good at all those things. So, uh, touring on this bike, oh, and it's got good wind protection as well as I've mentioned before. So you could ride for hours and hours on here. You could have yourself a great trip. Also, sitting upright, if you want to have, wear a rucksack as well, you could do that and you wouldn't, uh, you know, it'd feel quite comfortable, I think, on here. So. I think thumbs up as a tourer as well. Certainly Norley of Itchy Boots has uh, done plenty of touring on her CB500X. Doesn't seem to have a problem. 
So I don't think you need any better recommendation than that. Okay, so here I am in a particularly busy supermarket car park. And uh, what I'm going to do in here is find some spots and do my now infamous lugging about test. See what it's like in terms of turning circles. So uh, here's plenty of spots here. Look, let's park uh, right here. And then uh, see if I can get her two spots over. I don't know if I will. That car might be in the way. All right. Let's kill her. First thing is, she does lean over a fair way on the side stand, but it being a relatively light bike, it's not too bad to heft up. And you've got this great hand grip, so you can get hold of it as well to get her upright. Also, also use my knee on the side just to give her a nudge. All right, there we go. Nothing around. Right, full lock. Let's have a look. Actually, looks like I am going to get into that next space. There we go. Easily done. Really tight turning circle. Let's have a look from here. So from the middle of that one to there, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, turning circle is really tight on it and really no problem to lug it around as well. So if you're a bit wimpy like me, you can shift this bike around no problem at all. Yeah, another thumbs up for the CB500X. <laughs> Okay, so at the start of the video, I said I would give you the lessons I'd learn on the bike, both the negatives and the positives. So let's crack on with those. There are a few negatives that uh, have cropped up that I wanted to tell you about. It's not a very long list, but I have written them all down so I don't forget them. Uh, let's start off with uh, one that's a complaint that I think only I've made. Uh, I've seen various reviews on this bike since I've been riding it, and uh, no one else has complained about this, but I found the seat a little bit hard. It is quite a nice big seat. You can move around on it to find somewhere that's... Um, uh, comfortable for you, but I've just found it's a bit lacking in padding. So uh, for me personally, I think uh, the seat's a bit hard. I'm sure you can get aftermarket ones. You could put one of those sheepskin things on it and sort that out, but uh, it might just be my bony backside. I don't know, but uh, that's the first thing that I made a note of here. Not a big deal, but a little bit hard. Uh, next up, exhaust pipe. I think it looks a bit naff. Uh, check this out. It's got the same um, silencer situation uh, as I think it was the CB500R. Was that the one? CBR500R that I rode? Um, same exhaust there. Now, oddly, even though the exhaust looks a bit naff, it does sound pretty good on this bike so um, and it doesn't look so bad from the side but yeah those end pipes just look a bit rubbish to me okay next on my negatives list is something that I think I may have made a mistake on on my first ride review I said the screen wasn't adjustable in fact it is adjustable but you have to undo some bolts to make that happen so if you look down here you've got uh, a couple of allen bolts you undo and then you can move this, the screen up and down but the point is you can't adjust it on the fly so uh, if the seat if the screen doesn't suit you uh, you're gonna have a problem with that one Next thing, just a small winch, no traction control on the bike. It does have ABS, which is brilliant, but uh, no traction control on this, which would be nice in the wet. But, you know, the bike's 6,199 quid. What do you expect? And then last but not least on my winches list, no centre stand on the bike. It just makes it difficult for when you want to clean the chain. But uh, that's it for my negatives. There's really not that much not to like about this bike. OK, I know what you're thinking. Stop whinging, man. Tell us about the positive points on the bike. OK, so I've got a uh, bit of a longer list for this one. I'll take you through them. Uh, so the first thing on here is I do like the display on this. It's got everything you need and no more besides. I like the way the LCD is like a negative display, so it doesn't click between a night and day mode or anything like that. It just works both day and night. So uh, thumbs up for the LCD negative display on the bike. Next thing I've written here, smooth gearbox. The gearbox on this is absolutely lovely. It is a budget bike, as I said, but they've made, there's no, nothing about the bike that makes it feel budget at all, and the gearbox is no exception. It feels lovely and smooth, up and down um, shifts really smoothly. There's no clunking of gears. It's easy to find neutral. Thumbs up for the gearbox. Next up, engine manners. Real world power, I said here. This isn't a bike with loads of power. It's not going to break any records at the track and so on. But if you just want to get a shift on through traffic on your way to work, or indeed you want to do uh, some adventure travelling, this bike has got ample power for you. Uh, it's got great torque low down, and it never felt to me as if it needed more power. So uh, real world proper engine manners, I thought. Linked with that, light clutch. Lovely clutch on here. Um, some bikes, you know, you get used to any clutch, don't you? It's not a big deal, but uh, this one is particularly light, so I like that. Next up, amazing lights on this. Again, it's a budget bike, but it's got LED lights all round. And although uh, when I did the night segment, it didn't look as if the lights were that good, it's because the GoPro doesn't show lights very well uh, on a bike. But trust me, the lights on here are really, really good. They're some of the best lights I've come across on a bike. And again, amazing uh, given the cost of the bike. Next up, uh, suspension in the sweet spot for me, I mentioned. Again, the sweet, the um, suspension is fairly basic on this bike. There's no, not much adjustment, just a preload, I think, on front and back. Um, but it is set in the sweet spot for me. I weigh 11 stone, so I'm not particularly heavy. Maybe I'm not uh, a typical um, person that would ride the bike. I don't know, but it feels absolutely great to me. I wouldn't want to adjust it anyway. 
And next up here, good weather protection, um, both uh, from the wind and mud guard. So uh, what I mean by that is the frontal area is nice and big, the screen works quite well, there's no buffeting, uh, and the mud guards do work quite well. It does catch a lot of crud underneath the bike, but that's what they're there for. It's not flinging it up your back, or it's not flying off the front wheel, so that's another good thing. Uh, next up on my list, easy to ride and no over complex electronics. I love that about the bike. You can just enjoy the riding on this thing. Um, there's nothing to distract you. Uh, there's, no, there's no things that you have to set up before you can go and ride. You just get on and ride it and uh, it's got everything you need and, and nothing else besides. I like that about it. It's back to basics uh, riding. Um, next up, Frugality. The bike, not only is it cheap to purchase, as I keep saying, at uh, just uh, under £6,200, but it's also very, very cheap to run. Uh, when I filled this up, when it was empty, I think I put in something like 13 quid. I mean, that's incredible. And you'll get, well, I don't know what the, what the full range is, because I didn't run a full tank out and work it out, but I suspect you'd get a couple of hundred miles out of a tank easily. Uh, I constantly showed on here, uh, the fuel computer showed 89 miles per gallon, and there were times when I was cruising along that I actually saw 180 miles per gallon, would you believe, on the trip counter. So this is going to be not only cheap to buy, but cheap to run as well, and that's got to be a big thumbs up. Next up, the engine sounds good. I said that I didn't like the exhaust bike, but it does sound good. The twin motor in here, when you wind her up, it's got a nice growl to it. Much better than you'd anticipate when you look at the bike. Next up, feels light and agile. The handling and the way this thing operates is completely non-intimidating. It's really, really easy to ride, and I love that about the bike. I'm used to riding quite heavy bikes these days, uh, so it's a bit of a breath of fresh air to get on a lighter machine, and this thing, you can really chuck it about. It's brilliant. And then last but not least on my positive list, and this is possibly the most important thing you could say about any bike, it puts a smile on my face. Every time I got off this bike, I had a grin on my face and thought that was a really fun ride. So there we have it. That's the uh, 2021 Honda CB500X and my thoughts on it having ridden it for the last couple of weeks absolutely cracking little bike very very little significant to not like about it it's fun to ride it's comfortable it's light it handles well it's very frugal and it's value for money pricing to buy as well I can see why it's such a popular machine it would be absolutely perfect for as maybe your first big bike or if you need a practical commuter or maybe you're a smaller person and you want something that's just easy to live with and nice and light to move around yet does everything then this is definitely a bike you should consider so huge thumbs up and thanks again to Honda UK for lending me this bike thank you to you for watching don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden Flyer but I do bits and pieces in the garage about how to look after your bike I do monthly bike news, I do trips at home and sometimes abroad when you're allowed to basically anything and everything I try and cover here on the Missenden Flyer It'd be great to have you along next time. All right, until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. You're still here? Now, I know what you're thinking. Is that new merch you're wearing, TMF? You're looking pretty darn sharp on the video today. Well, yes, indeed it was. Thank you very much for asking. If you go to www.themissandandflyer.com, you can check out this stuff. So let me show you what we've got here on this uh, ensemble. First off, we've got my new long sleeve t-shirt. This will cost you just 20 quid uh, if you go to the aforementioned website. And then the piece de resistance, my new gilet. This one, if you're feeling a little bit more flush and you want to treat yourself, 38 quid. It's got a fleecy lining and it's got a chest pocket and it doubles up as an excellent mid layer if you want to wear it underneath your biking jacket. But do be careful if you're going to buy these because they drive the women absolutely mad. So wear them with care, you have been warned. Oh, one more thing, please, no more comments about me hanging my jackets up on a gas pipe. If you look closely, they're not hanging on the gas pipe, they're hanging on hooks that are screwed into the joist above the gas pipe. All right, so no more comments about that. Cheers.